After you've created an ASP.NET Dynamic Data website and registered your model, you're more than likely going to want to go in and make a few changes to that site. What they give you out of the box is nice, but it definitely opens up a lot of room for enhancements and modifications. So in this section, I'm going to talk through how we can do some different modifications. Now there's a lot of things you could do. You could go in and just modify the master page. You could go in and tweak the CSS to change the fonts or the colors. You could go in and actually change how the different edit or list pages render their data. We can even go in and change how the URLs displayed up in the browser and change what's called the routes. But what I'm going to focus on is what I think is definitely more useful and certainly real world, something you'll find yourself doing fairly frequently with these types of sites, and that is customizing and modifying fields and the data that's displayed in those fields. Now modifying fields is actually very simple to do. I'll show you how to get into the dynamic data folder and, and locate those templates that it provides. And then I'll show you how we can make some pretty cool modifications. So the one I'm going to demonstrate in the demonstration coming up here is we're going to talk about how we can have date time fields. And by default the time will be written out and sometimes you don't want that. And it just writes out a text box. Well, we're going to change that to look like what you see here. When the user clicks in the text box, we're going to make it so a jQuery date picker pops up. That way, they don't have to type in the date, plus it'll block them from typing invalid characters that really shouldn't be in a date time field anyway. So I'll show you how to do that process and how to make this much easier to work with from an end user perspective, plus it'll keep the data cleaner, of course. And you could certainly add validation logic on top of this as well if you'd like. So let me show you an example of how to get started with modifying dynamic data fields. ASP.NET dynamic data websites can easily be customized in a variety of ways. In this demonstration, I'm going to show how we can do field level modifications and customizations. But at a higher level, we can always come in and customize site.master for layout and the overall look. We can come into site.css and change fonts and colors and padding and borders and all that type of stuff. But anytime we want to change how the page is rendering data or go down as low as the field level changes, we need to go into our dynamic data folder that's automatically added when we create a dynamic data website. So you can see that we can come in and change the page templates, how things are filtered. We can even come into the fields, and that's what I'm going to do in this demonstration. So date times are currently being rendered using a date time edit. And let's look at that in action. So let's come back. We'll run our default ASPX, come down into sales order headers, and we'll edit it. And you'll see that order date, due date, and ship date all our date time items, but it's not too good of an experience. Number one, the time is being written out. We probably don't want that. It's pretty irrelevant for these types of dates. And we also have the date, but although it displays it fine, the user can type in whatever they want. They'd have to go look up the date if they're trying to uh, adjust the ship date, for instance. And so it's not a very good user experience. We'd want to make it more like most of the airlines and hotels out there do on their website, where you get some type of a date picker. So to do that, we can come in to our dynamic data folder field templates and we can edit our date time edit ASCX. So this is a user control and this is actually what's being used anytime a date time field is rendered. So you'll see right now a simple text box is being used. Well, I want to go in and change that of course to be some type of a date picker, a calendar. Now one of my favorite ways to do that is to use a script library called jQuery. So let me run off to jQuery.com. And at jQuery.com, you can get the latest version of this script library. Now, a full discussion of jQuery is well outside the bounds of this module's topic. But if you're interested, up on the Pluralsight.com website, there is a course on jQuery if you'd like to get more into this. I'm going to show you the fundamentals, though, of how to get started with it and how we can use jQuery Date Picker. So the first thing I'm going to do is download jQuery 1.61. And I'm going to go ahead and save this into our website. So I have AdventureWorks Lite Admin. We're going to go to the Scripts folder. And we're going to save our script right into there. So that's the first thing I need. Now the next thing I want to do is I need to get the date picker functionality. Now that's not included out of the box with the jQuery script. 
but it's easy to get. If I click up on UI, I can come in and we can see all the cool stuff that jQuery UI offers. So if I click Browse All Effects and Widgets, we can come down and click on Date Picker. Now, Date Picker is just a JavaScript. It's a client-side control that runs in the browser that allows the user to come in and do like we're pretty used to on different websites, like I mentioned, airlines, hotels, and things like that. That's what we're after. That's what we want to make. So to do that, I'm going to click up on Download. We need to download the theme for this, the CSS, and the JavaScript that drives this date picker control. So when we click on Download, I can come to our jQuery UI download screen. Now there's a lot of themes you can pick. We're going to go with the uh, default one. We're going to go with the latest version. And you'll see, in addition to the date picker, there's a lot of other items you can add. Accordions, buttons, custom pop-up dialogues, sliders, tabs, a lot of good stuff. So I'm just going to download all of it into the script. But we could just select date picker if we want. All right, so let me go ahead and open that. That's going to give us a zip file. And there's two things I need to grab out of here. I need to grab this folder in the CSS called UI Lightness. We're going to copy that. I'm going to run off to the desktop where my website is. And let me go ahead and add a new folder into here, and we'll call it Styles. Let's paste that into there. And the last thing I need to do is we need to come into the zip, come into the JavaScript area, and grab this UI18 Custom. This contains all the controls that we're going to work with. And I'm going to put that in my Scripts folder. Okay, so that's kind of how you get started uh, going out to jQuery.com, grabbing the jQuery script, and then grabbing the appropriate files for jQuery UI. So now let's hit refresh back on our website. And you'll see that in our scripts, we now have jQuery 161, which is the latest version, as well as our custom jQuery UI. I'm going to go ahead and delete the older versions that were automatically added for us with dynamic data. So we'll go ahead and take those out. Okay, so the next thing I need is to put these scripts and the custom CSS that I have here uh, into my website. Now, I, I certainly could put it just in this file, but I probably could use this across multiple pages, potentially in my dynamic data website. So we're going to come in and just modify our master page. So let's drag in the CSS, and then let's also drag in our jQuery file first and then we'll add in our jQuery UI. Now I'm going to adjust this just a little bit to tell the website to go up one level. There's a couple ways we could do this, but this will work fine. And we'll go ahead and save it. So now these scripts are going to be available. I also need to adjust that one to make it similar to what we have there. These scripts are going to be available to every uh, page in the website. So in the page templates, there's several for details and editing and inserting and all that good stuff. So since we put this in the master, it'll be available everywhere. So the next thing I need to do now is come back into our template, and when this loads, we'd like to attach some client-side JavaScript functionality that will automatically add that date picker. So to do that, I'm going to come in and add a script block, and we'll do text equals JavaScript. And then in here, I need to know when this particular user control is loaded. I need to know on the client side in the browser uh, when this text box is available. Well, in jQuery, here's how you do that. You say, I'd like to know when the document is ready. And when it is ready, I'm going to call some code, a little function, like that. So when the document's ready, invoke this anonymous function. And that anonymous function is now going to find this text box and then attach the date picker functionality. All right, so the first thing we need to do is find this text box. And the way we do that in jQuery is we do what's called an ID selector. That pound, or the hash, means let's go find the ID called text box 1. And then I'd like to add date picker functionality. Now, that date picker function is in our jQuery UI script that we downloaded. OK, so now we're kind of ready to go. So let's run it and see what happens. You'll see it's not going to work quite yet. There's another little trick I need to show you. So we'll come in to Sales Order Headers, we'll hit Edit, and you'll see that it doesn't work. And we're actually going to have a script there that's going on. I'll show you why. If we go to View Source here, 
And let's go search for, say, ship date. All right, you'll notice that we have right here an input, type equals text. Uh, here's the value that was written out. And then you'll notice that the ID is not text box one. And we are writing JavaScript after all, so we need the client side ID, not the server side ID. So I could come in and cut and paste that ID right there uh, in here, but that would only work then for that one. So that's not what we want because that would only work for the one ship date. What I need to do is find the client ID that's generated, and the way we can do that is let ASP.NET figure it out. So I'm going to come in and do a little server-side tag to say, ASP.NET, please go find textbox1 and write out the client ID value into this script area. So now this pound will say to jQuery, go find the ID, the client-side ID, this percent equals tells ASP.NET, please write out textbox1 client ID, which will be that long string you just saw. But now it'll work with any of the text boxes. Okay, so now that we have the date picker hooked up, we have jQuery go find the text box. Now it should find the appropriate one. Let's see what happens. So let's run it one more time. Go to edit. And now you'll see we get a nice little date picker. So I can come in and I could pick some different dates in here if we'd like. Works out very, very nicely. The user can switch months. Makes it very easy to work with and definitely something most users are accustomed to. Now the only problem I have with this still is when it loads, you'll notice that although the date picker is nice, we really don't want to show the time here. To fix that, we can come back into our user control and you'll notice that we have the field value string. What I'm going to do is add a little bit of code in here to say if it's not an empty string, let's go ahead and format it as a specific type of date time object, but only show the date. So we can do that by coming in and we'll do a little if statement here. So I'll say if the field value string does not equal empty strings, then we want to go ahead and wrap a string dot format call around this and we're going to do a special format code. So we're going to take the value that's going to represent the zero once it runs at runtime and we're going to convert that to month, day, year and then we're going to pass in convert to date time our field value edit string. So we'll go ahead and close that and then we'll close the string dot uh, format that we had. Okay, otherwise or else, we're just going to put empty strings into the text box. So again, as a review, it's a little bit of a long string, but we're going to say if the field value edit string that dynamic data passes us isn't empty, then, that would be the then, we're going to go ahead and say let's format that value as a month, day, year format code. That'll give us a date time object to use the format code on, and then we could say otherwise empty strings. Now there's multiple ways we could do this part right here. We could even do datetime.parse if we wanted and it'd actually be even a little less code, but this will work. So let's go ahead and run it. We'll go to sales order header, go to edit, and that looks much better. We don't have the time on there. We still have the date picker functionality though. Makes it very easy for the user now to come in and select what they'd like. And it's a lot cleaner, I think, approach. And one of the nice things I didn't mention earlier is that if I take this date out, I'm going to try to type some alphabetic characters. You'll notice it doesn't allow those. So it only allows them if they are going to type to enter specific dates, and it can even, you can even tie in some validation to that. So that's an example of one of the different things we can do as far as modifications and customizations go with an ASP.NET dynamic data site makes it very easy to go into these different fields and customize things and work with those. Now there's a lot of other things we could do, but this will wrap up the module and give you a good jump start on getting started with dynamic data.